Hey, good evening, and uh, welcome to Bards at Home. Uh, Bards at Home 2, the Bards at Home order, uh, in celebration of our current lockdown, I suppose. Um, to everyone joining us from previous Bards, welcome back. Uh, to people who may not have been with us before, welcome. We hope you have a good time. Um, what is Bards, if you haven't seen it before? Uh, this is a variety show that we normally run out of Kitchener Waterloo Little Theatre about two or three times a year. Uh, like pretty much everything, we took a long break in 2020, but we're back and we're online in 2021. Uh, we returned in January, and it seemed like everyone had a pretty good time with that. So here in our second Ontario lockdown, we thought we would have another online party. Uh, for this Bards, we returned to earlier form and we put out a call to the community. And this month, <clears throat> five performers have answered the call. Uh, we do have fewer musical acts than our January one and some more eclectic performances. Um, and with only five performers tonight and we will not be having an intermission, I think we might meet my forever goal of finishing before 10 o'clock. Let's see how that goes. Um, also, uh, as with last time, this Bards is not a battle. So we will not have voting for who should win or who will get coveted tickets, because also at the moment there are no coveted KWLT tickets uh, to hand out. And Mel will not be uh, mailing any prize books uh, because some of our performers are out of province, for example. Um, another important part, I think, for Bards is, as I always say, the audience. We have such a great audience because we have such a great community at KWLT. Uh, none of us can hear you directly today, though we do know that you are in the YouTube chat, um, and I really hope that you enjoy tonight. Uh, to get that started, actually, we have a task for you, uh, because one of our performers tonight is doing improv, and some of the joy of improv is getting that feedback from the audience, uh, but we can't get live feedback from you because you're about 20, 30 seconds behind us. Um, so instead, we're just going to ask for uh, a seed of information, a, an idea to spark from you. And first off, can we get, uh, number one, a subject that you would like to hear about, and number two, the title of a story that you would like to have read to you. Uh, so put those suggestions in the chat. If you can tag them with number one and number two, we would appreciate that. Uh, and we will work that into something uh, later on in the show. Uh, so before we begin, actually, I would like to thank KWLT for hosting us, Kitchener Waterloo Little Theatre. Uh, in times when we can do theatre in person, we would be at their beautiful place at 9 Princess Street. Uh, and we would also have a nice jar on the table open for donations. So as you're watching tonight, I would invite everyone to maybe in another tab, uh, pop open kwlt.org, move over to the donations page and see if you would like to contribute tonight. It helps with things like this and it helps that once uh, this is all over, we have a place to go back to and that this can continue. Uh, I would also like to thank tonight Albert O'Connor. He's part of our Bards organizing group and he is your community manager. So uh, say hi to Albert, everyone. He can hear you, the rest of us can't. Um, I would also like to thank Nadia uh, for running all of this on a technical level, uh, running the stream, pulling people in and out, setting up this wonderful lighting. Uh, the lighting this time around is beautiful and uh, it doesn't have the soft or the harsh light that we had previously. I can do anything I want with my hands and I will not like hide my face in shadow because we have these gorgeous uh, lighting umbrellas going on. Uh, and then lastly, I would also like to thank the third member of our Bards Organizing Committee, and that is Mel. Mel is back, and she will be running Trivia Corner with us tonight. Uh, let's, uh, let's have her in for a moment. Hey. Hey, good evening, Mel. How are you? <laughs> Doing okay. Still good. lovely on crutches a little, but, you know. <laughs> you, uh, is that your humorous behind you? Uh, yeah, it's, I, just, I just found it. It's all... Kind of curious. <laughs> uh, so what do you have in store for us? Uh, well, I've got um, bringing back a classic, which is indie band or racehorse. Um, so I'm going to be giving people the names of either indie bands or racehorses. Um, and uh, there's... Which is which, yeah. Yes. And um, there's a Google form to put your answers in. Um, you can wait to uh, get some accidental and on purpose clues from me, or you can try to go ahead and guess, I suppose, but uh, be more fun if you follow along. That's fair. Yeah, I guess they're all there on the form right now, but if you follow along, then uh, the questions may be more fun with us uh, talking about them. Uh, before you go, I've got a question for you. So because we're doing Indie Band or Racehorse, what was your favorite live concert that you've ever been to uh, or live horse race that you've ever been to? 
Well, I haven't been to a live uh, horse race, but um, one of my favorite concerts I've been to uh, is an indie band called The Double Clicks, and they'd be considered like a nerd, a nerd band. Um, they're a I pair mean. of siblings, and they've got like they've got a song about Mr. Darcy. They've got a song about jam, like literally jam. Strawberry or raspberry jam? Yeah, what, whatever, whatever kind of jam you like. Yeah, that's my jam. Yeah, yeah, it's literally called "This Is My Jam." Oh, cool, awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. We'll uh, we'll see you pretty soon. We'll see you after each performer. So, uh, thank you, and we'll see you in a little bit. Uh, with that, I think let's get started for tonight. So, uh, our first performer is a queer, trans, non-binary parent who is struggling to remember what it felt like to perform for actual humans in meat space. Um, in their spare time, they design role-playing games to avoid actually practicing their instrument. Uh, will everyone please give a big round of applause to Ash Kreider. Hello, everyone. It's uh, nice to be here. I'm uh, a regular performer at Bards, um, but this is my first time doing this virtually. Uh, and I gotta say, it's a little unsettling not seeing your faces. So gonna do my best. Um, I've got so two song parodies for you today. Um, so naturally the one that I'm starting with is the more specific one. Um, I can't take the credit for the first song uh, that goes to my friend Bronwyn. Um, so for the one and a half people in the audience who enjoy both children's cartoons and uh, the ballad of Sweeney Todd, um, this is for you. Here we go. I want to be the very best like no one ever was. To catch them is my real test, to train them is my cause. Oh, Pokemon, gotta catch them all. It's you and me and destiny. I will travel across the land, searching far and wide. Each Pokemon to understand the power that's inside. Oh, Pokemon, I'll catch them all. It's destiny. little mashup of a song about murdering people and putting them into pies and catching wild animals in plastic balls. I don't know. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, my next song, uh, this is uh, more of a full parody. Um, it's inspired by the fact that, um, so I'm the shopper in my family and I see the same two old white women at the grocery store every week, either, you know, with their nose out or just fully pulling down their masks so they can talk on the phone. So um, 14 months in, it's a bit frustrating. And this song is a musical letter to all of the anti-maskers out there. Oh, hang on. There we go. Hey there, Delilah, one year into this pandemic and you still will not admit that you got fooled by dumb polemic. No, not you. You know that COVID's all fake news. You swear it's true. Hey there, Delilah, you don't honor social distance. We're all tired of this lockdown. Wish you would just shut up and listen. Wear a mask. It's not hard to cover your face, you said disgrace. Oh, it's what you do to me, oh, and all humanity. Oh, cause death is all we'll see, oh, if you don't hear this plea from the folks like me. Hey. 
Hey there, Delilah, I know times are getting real hard because you can't get a haircut with the points on your loyalty card, not today. But you can't hug COVID away, it's here to stay. Hey there, Delilah, I've got so much left to say, but I don't know if you'll listen, cause I'm clearly pretty gay, you know it all. You'll stay tuned to your Facebook wall, you're in their thrall. Oh, it's what you do to me, oh, and all humanity. Oh, cause plague is all we'll see, oh, if you don't hear this plea from the folks like me. No two meters seem so far, and you really want to drink in bars. This stupid quarantine's gone on too long. I just don't know how to explain, cause you've got Doug Ford on the brain, and you're too proud to admit you were wrong. Delilah, I can promise you that by the time this plague gets through, the world will never ever be the same, and you're too blessed. You be good and cover your mouth Cause I'm going bloody crazy Cause I can't safely leave my house Thanks to you You selfish flaming bag of poo You have no clue Oh, it's what you do to me Oh, and all humanity Oh, cause plague is all we'll see from the folks like me. All right, that's my time. Um. I am muted. <laughs> the end of the night. Thank you very much, Ash. Thank you very much. Uh, I was going to give people a moment to clap in their homes, but I pretty much was muted. So uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, how long did it take you to write that one? Uh, I mean, you know, Hey There Delilah is like four chords. So, uh, you know, it, it was, it came together in the course of an afternoon, really. Like, um, I, I've, it probably was uh, uh, my husband, Kit, who had the original idea, but I was the one who was like, oh, yeah, Delilah is kind of a old lady name. So I could be in this song at these <laughs> yeah, I know that, grocery yeah. store nose masking people. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, other creative things that you do, you're a game designer, too. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah. Um, so I just had a Kickstarter uh, in February uh, slash March for a role playing game called Our Traveling Home, which is my love letter to Howl's Moving Castle. It's a game about um, happy queer romance and found family. Um, so uh, yeah, that's going pretty well. I'm in the middle of um, finishing laying up the book and I'm I'm getting illustrations from my illustrator. So that's pretty fun. Um, nice. And yeah, that'll be done and shipped hopefully by June. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to get my copy. I'm a backer. So <laughs> big fan, big fan. Uh, anything else you wanted to plug? Any other games you've done? Um, you know, not anything, uh, that I've got going on right now. Um, yeah, uh, I will say, uh, for anyone who is into weird indie, interesting stuff, um, uh, uh, Jian Shim, uh, is an amazing game designer doing all kinds of interesting stuff. And she's got, uh, a Kickstarter for a two player game called the shape of shadow. Uh, and it's about like a, a sorcerer's apprentice and they're, mentor who something goes wrong um yeah it, it looks pretty cool so it's up on kickstarter right now um, okay cool. if you're into weird conceptual role-playing games i'd recommend checking it out cool thank you and we can uh, follow you on uh, twitter to to see more things that you like uh yeah yep yeah, you can uh yeah um you know uh you can follow me on twitter um and uh yeah i'll be tweeting updates about uh how our traveling home is going so. Nice. I'm really excited for that one. So yeah. cool.
Well, thank you for joining us, um, Ash. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say thanks for doing this. Um, you know, it's it's uh even without people, it's nice to get a chance to perform. And I know it's a lot more work for you doing it this way. So uh thanks for creating the space and thank you. Um hello to everybody watching out there. Hello, and uh we'll see you later, Ash. Take All care. Right. Take care. All right. Um, we are going to move on to our first uh, trivia of the night. So we'll call Mel back in and uh, some slides. Hey. Hello. Welcome back. It's time for Indie Band or Racehorse. Yes. So the first one is R, specifically with four R's. With four R's. Yes. So if it were three R's, I know that's a racehorse. But if it's four R's, I do not know. Okay. I feel Thank like you. you're pretending okay. to know things. I am pretend. I will be pretending a lot if I accidentally give any clue of like, oh yeah, this is an indie band. I do not know the truth. <laughs> um, yeah. So no clue about this one. No clue about the four R's. Well, let's go to number two. All right. Number two is Daphne Loves Derby. This feels like a trick question. But is like, it? I don't, yeah, that's true, actually. I don't know if there are any horses that have Derby in their name or not. I'm sure there are horses that have Daphne in their name. Is she a Disney princess? What's that top left one? Um, That is... She's not a Disney princess as far as I know. It looks very um, tingly. Yes, it looks very like Frozen style. Yeah. A lot of iterations of Scooby Doo. Yes, I think Albert is guessing along uh, in the chat <laughs> as well. So let's look more. He'll influence people. Yeah. Well, number three, Frightened Rabbit. This is an excellent name for either. You can you can hear it. It's like and it's Frightened Rabbit rounding the corner. Frightened Rabbit. <laughs> And we are frightened rabbit. <laughs> yeah, I, I am torn. I'm going to say indie band for this one. I think it's a mm. solid indie band name. It's a good thing I don't remember any of the answers because yeah, really the other. <laughs> We're solid. <laughs> or do I? Anyway. Yeah. And finally, I think for the last one for this set, number mm -hmm. four, Gay Crusader. Crusader. I take back what I said about Frightened Rabbit. This is a fantastic <laughs> name for both things. Uh, again, I'm going to say indie band, though. But what a great race artist. All right, so, uh, so we're going to do about four at a time. Um, so we will see you back after our next performer. See ya. Great. See you. See you later. Uh, so our next performer is part statistician and part writer. Uh, which combines to a, a fractal of analytical creativity. Uh, she's passionate about exploring how different structures can support storytelling. Uh, her Bird's Act tonight is her answer to the challenges of doing an interactive virtual Bird's performance when she can't get live feedback. This is where your titles are coming in. Uh, she's currently in the early stages of planning for an upcoming theater event. Uh, please put your hands together for Sophie Twardis. Greetings and salutations. I'm so happy to be at Bards tonight. So I will be doing some improv. Um, already you provide the suggestions that are gonna shape my act. I have not seen these suggestions. The first time I'll see them is when they appear on screen. Additionally, the other Bards performers will be providing live drawings during my act. I'll be doing two improv scenes tonight. First, I'll be doing a presentation on the topic. Then after we've done some learning, I will tell you a story. But without further ado, let me tell you about the very important topic of Scottish history. Well, the Scots have been along for a very long time. And as everyone knows, the Scots are known for the haggis and for their lopsided trees. However, they are not known for their turtles. The Scottish had declared war on the turtles. 
They are not to be accepted in Scotland due to the fact the time the turtles betrayed them. However, Ash is bueno. Like, they are very supportive of Ash and the Olympics. The Scots are going to dominate this year's Olympics because not only are we taking care of current history, but also future history. And a little known fact is the fact that tape is a Scottish invention. That's why you have the Scottish pattern on the tape. So remember not to use tape with the Irish because that is not what it's all about. But other things about Scotland are obviously the bagpipes. You always need bagpipes. If you're to do a Scottish presentation, first you need bagpipes, then you go out to sea, then you get to the pyramids, and then a terrible storm happens. Obviously, this is the Macbeth part of Scotland, because Macbeth. <laughs> and as time goes on, then we get more animals increase with time in Scotland, because they have they've been very kind to their environment, unless they're turtles. Turtles are not to be accepted. But fish, the fish are supposed well, in conclusion, we here love Scotland. Though we're also, like, they're on their own. We're, we're, we're like, uh, we, we love them, but we're not visiting them because there's a global pandemic. So, as, as, uh, but, like, our love has sort of faded away. It, it wasn't as strong as it used to be because, like, when it, it, you're not out of mind, like it just fades away. And that is an overview of Scottish history. I hope that you've learned very useful lessons from this. Now that we're moving away from history to fiction, because everything else I said was entirely factual. And so I will be telling you a lovely short story um, of storybook. So. The title of the story is The Very Hungry Dinosaur. Once upon a time, there was a dinosaur named Fred. And like most creatures, he had an appetite. He liked to eat food, especially tulips. And so this dinosaur was very happy in the capital of Ottawa because they had this tulip festival. And the weather was just gorgeous. Um, and, but however, drama occurred, tragedy and comedy, as well he was about to feast on these delicious tulips. It suddenly snowed at the end of April. Very unusual. And so there was not enough tulips to go around. And the sad rabbit had to mug the dinosaur. And so he had to venture out into the sea to find food to eat. There he had, there was a shark and an octopus and a jellyfish, so much good seafood for him to consume. Just, and all just, and he ate them all. He ate the fish, the dinosaurs and had some wonderful shark fin soup. He ate the octopus and just enjoyed every single tentacle and the jellyfish, but he wasn't happy enough with that. No, he had to eat more. He had to eat the entire galaxy. 
And so he ventured off into the planet so he could eat every single thing. And because he was so hungry, his appetite was all consuming. He managed to escape the comet that would destroy all the dinosaurs because he got off planet. And he is wandering the stars, eating everything that he can see all the time, including the aliens that try to invade Earth. And that's the story of Fred R the Dinosaur. And yes, it is the end of this chapter of the story. There may be a sequel one day or not. Who knows? Tune in next time. Thank you very much. Um, what what made you decide to do it this way? Um, I, I, I know you love improv. You've done it before with bards. Uh, how did you come up with this uh, this method? Well, like I had done something similar with bards, where I had just given pieces of people to that they can draw on, and very much like the so that was like kind of my original inspiration of like, oh, I did this, and I can definitely just bring it to a virtual environment of you can have a shared screen. And like, it's very hard to do good improv online just because you have a bit of like latency. But with this, like I'm providing audio and the other performers are providing visuals. So there isn't that like conflict of people speaking over each other. And so it's kind of a way that you can synergize different sorts of info. Yeah, that's fair. And, and I would like to thank all of our other bards who were in the, uh, what is this, Jamboard uh, that you yeah. set up with? Uh, in yeah. Jamboard, writing these slides ahead of you, basically. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Jamboard is like a tool that is under Google. Um, I've tried a bunch of different online drawing tools, and I liked it because it was like probably easiest to use, but most versatile. I would have liked a fill tool. Uh, I was missing out on fill, but like my months of practice with drawful did not let me down in this situation. Uh, <laughs> we actually have a, a comment from the, uh, the chat room that we'd like to float up here. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Matt Mustin says, this is a more accurate portrait of Scottish history than Braveheart. <laughs> so what do you think of that compliment? Oh, I I'm touched. Because, well, I haven't seen Braveheart, but um, I feel like fine. Braveheart was actually sincerely trying to be an accurate portrayal of Scottish history. I was just, whatever offers people gave me, I would accept. Fair. Um, be before we uh, let you go for the night, is there anything else that you'd like to plug? Oh, well, um, I'm working on a secret project. Um, so keep the weekend of uh, July 10th and 11th free. Okay, cool. Well, sounds good. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Sophie. Thank we'll you, you for having me. And uh, before we move on, we are going to invite Mel back for some more trivia. Hello, welcome back. Hello. Time for more indie band. I almost said indie horse or race band. That's for like. <laughs> oh boy. One of those is problematic. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we're moving on to number five Ghost Zapper. Ghost Zapper. Really reminded me of Ghost Light mm -hmm. as a concept. So, indie band, race horse. I want to say a uh, racehorse this time. This is a racehorse. Yeah, it sounds really like dynamic. In yes. fact, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That fit exactly. So fast they zap ghosts. All right, what's number six? Number six is half man, half biscuit. Um, I don't know. I, at first I thought racehorse, like a, a centaur is half man, half horse. And really, mm -hmm. you're getting more than half of a horse in that situation. Um, half man, half biscuit. Let's uh, let's say racehorse again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Number seven, Henry the Octopus. 
Pigs. That is an adorable name for a horse. I've never known a racehorse to have an adorable name, so I'm going to go in on Indie Band with this one. <laughs> That's fair. This is a uh, an image taken from the Northwest Northwest Pacific Tree Octopus, which is an entirely fictional thing. Oh, good. Oh. Okay, you sounded so <laughs> confident. I was like, wait a minute. This is <laughs> It's, is like it's, out of water for like 10 or 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. So, uh, that, that is true. But um, no, uh, the Northwest Pacific tree octopus is used for um, internet literacy tests to okay. test kids on how literate they are and how I well love. they challenge things they read on the internet. I love it. Yeah. All right. Number eight. Number eight is it's your nickel. So you're biasing us towards indie band because that's Nickelback. I want to say that's a racehorse. I almost want to say I have seen that racehorse ride. And I'm going to be embarrassed if it was like a seven-week racehorse. But that is the racehorse's name. That's my most confident one so far. Actually, not even signaling out of the corner of my eye. She also believes race, racehorse. Or it's an all-keyboard indie band. <laughs> yeah, it's like is this a bluff? Is this double bluff? Yeah. I... It's a diva. It's it's a diva kind of band. Here we mm -hmm. go. Okay, well that's uh, that's another four for us. So thank you, Mel. We'll see you a little bit later. Uh, All right. Uh, so our next performer is no stranger to the Bard stage. He's done at least a half dozen performances with us um, over the year, and pretty much never in the same style twice. Uh, at this point he will have completed his taxes. This is very important. And he has asked me by putting it in his bio to read to everyone now that he has completed his taxes. This is to hold him accountable. So with that in mind, will everyone please welcome to their homes and to their kitchens, Michael L. Davenport. I was standing here and thinking, oh yeah, I put that in my bio. Just so everyone knows, I did complete my taxes a whole two days ahead of time. So that must be a personal best. Anyway, I'm here today because I'm going to make some factory homemade soup, carrot soup. Uh, I wanted to make carrot soup from powder, but also have it be homemade because the incongruity of that amused me. You'll see what I mean. So I am going to step through the process of making the soup and I am going to show you seven things I learned along the way. Thing number one, uh, do not wear any sort of dangly bits like bracelets or rings near rotary devices. This is the only one of the lessons that I did not learn the hard way. So ties to, if anyone's done shop class, you know what I mean. All right, so how did I make carrot soup? Start out with carrots. Uh, Mel and I are members of a CSA. We got a crap ton of carrots. And then I diced them up. I didn't want to dice them by hand, so I used the KitchenAid. And I have this handy dandy rotary attachment that chops it all up for me. Just gonna do a quick demo here. Boop, 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 boop. And nice little diced carrots. All right. So once I have the diced carrots, I put them in the dehydrator, which is this thing. This brings me to lesson number two. Dehydrators are underrated. They are great. This costs like a hundred bucks and it could turn diced carrots into little crispy things like that. Just da da da. I make kale chips in it, it's great. All right, so once I have a whole bunch of dried carrot bits, I wanted to grind them up. So I got a flour mill and I tried to use the flour mill with the KitchenAid. And I learned the hard way that the flour mill doesn't like carrots. 
the carrots bind up in there and the KitchenAid was making very unhappy noises. So I couldn't do that. Did not want to break the KitchenAid for a Bard's Act. That would make me sad. That makes Stephanie Remington sad. I don't know if she's watching, but just sadness all around. So that brings me to lesson number three. Be aware, be flexible. I needed to change the plans on the fly because this was earlier this afternoon because I didn't plan that far ahead. Come up with some other uh, way. I also took the top off of this to see if there's any bits inside that I could poke at to make it less unhappy and uh, there wasn't, but that does bring me to lesson number four. If you have a hobby with complicated tools, you really have two hobbies. You've got the original hobby and then you've got fixing the tool. Anyone who owns a 3D printer knows what I mean. Your hobbies are 3D printing and fixing your 3D printer. All right, so uh, after being like, okay, I can't grind this using the KitchenAid, what am I gonna do? Lesson five, not everything's automatable. Sometimes old fashioned tools work very well. I just put the stuff in a mortar and pestle and did this. Lesson six, <clears throat> that's dusty. Mortar and pestle equals stress relief. I had this by my monitor at work all day and we've all been, well, I don't know if everyone's been working from home, but anyone who's had an office job is working from home now. And I'm sure a lot of us have seen people like knit or crochet on the meeting. I just left this next to the, next to the monitor and in meetings, it's just like, hmm, got a few minutes, just gonna do some grinding. All right, and once I completed the mortar, mortar and pestling. I ended up with pretty fine powder. And I ended up with carrot soup powder. And it's gonna be one of those deals that's just like, just add water, except it's not water. It's gonna be some broth. I'm gonna pour this, I'm gonna live dangerously here. Just gonna pour this, freehand that. Oh, gotta be decisive when you pour out of a pot like this. So this is partially chicken broth and partially uh, yesterday's spinach water because sometimes vegetable water is delicious too. All right, there we go. And I wanted to show all you all this because this is, this is kind of magical. This is just 40 grams of carrot powder. And I'm just gonna pour this broth in here and it, Looks very blah now, but as the carrots rehydrate with the magic of the broth, this will turn into soup. It will gradually thicken up. This sort of thing that you could bring on a camping trip, I suppose. Oh yeah. It's not as fine as I would have liked because the flour mill strategy didn't work. Well, that's all right. This is a learning experience. I guess that's lesson eight out of seven. Any hobby is full of, any endeavor is full of learning experiences. Ah, uh, yeah. There we go. Yes, lesson nine out of seven is I am not the greatest at planning. Also, this bowl is very hot. Oh, I didn't even say lesson seven out of seven. I skipped right to eight and nine. Lesson seven out of seven. Soup is delicious. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. There's a bit of ginger in here too. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Hey, welcome back. Oh, sorry. I turned... back? Am I interrupting your meal? Oh no, I'm I'm good. Let's let's chat. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, oh, I was meaning to ask uh, when I uh, when I stopped by for uh, for food. Uh, did you finish your taxes? I did finish my taxes. Oh good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Two you, days you... ago. Oh good. Okay. No, I, uh, I I wasn't here when you were uh, when you had all of your guests over here for soup. <laughs> so this is. Can you remind me, Davenport? Is this your third time cooking with bards? At least third, because there is the uh, Saganaki Opa that I did outside the theater. Ooh, actually, one, one second. I think we have a photo of that. Can we pull the photo up of the Saganaki oh. Opa? Oh, there we go. 
I oh, remember cool. that. it was uh, summer of 2013, I think. That long ago? Oh, yeah, goodness. It was, yeah. Uh, so then uh, what else have you done? I remember uh, mug brownies in the microwave. I did do a mug cake. I brought all the ingredients and I did right on stage. I brought a microwave, which oddly is one of the few things I don't have in this kitchen. I have oh, a really? kitchen aid and a dehydrator and an instant pot. I don't have a microwave. No room for a microwave with a dehydrator, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any other food acts? Those are the ones that come to mind. <sighs> I guess now we've got the trifecta online. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, anything else you're up to lately? What, what have you got going on in your life? Well, I did want to mention why I chose this as my act. Mm -hmm. And the... The reason why I chose this as my act is because I wanted to take advantage of the home format. There's no way I was going to be able to transport all of this to the theater, so why not make lemons out of lemonade or carrot soup out of carrots? Uh, in terms of things that I am up to, uh, two things, actually. One, I'm working on a secret project, so maybe people could keep the weekend of July 10th and 11th free. And the other thing is, I actually have a trivia question for Mel. Mel, would you like soup? Okay. She can't answer right now. Let's let's assume yes. So, okay. Uh, thank you, Davenport. We'll see you later. And see you later. Uh, we'll join Mel right now for more trivia and maybe some soup. Hey. Hello, welcome back. I do remember there was one Bard's act where Davenport um, had many plates of food and he was talking about how he would always get behind in tasks and then he was having more and more food be ready before he finished eating each plate of food and then he finally got to dessert. I do remember that one. It wasn't so much a cooking thing. It was like a metaphor for productivity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so what have you got for us now? I see number nine is Jukebox. Oh, I was taking it as Jukebox and the Ghost. It's No, jukebox. no, Jukebox the Ghost. Okay, um, I'm going to guess Indie Band because this has the same grammatical structure as Toad the Wet Sprocket. Oh, okay. So that's my logic. It's fair. Yeah. Number 10. I am getting oh. soup. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably pretty hot. <laughs> Is the bowl still hot? I, it's fine. I can I hold the edge. <laughs> well, we'll thank you, on. question mark. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I, number 10 is the new Young Pony Club. This yeah. sounds like a band because that would be a really weird plural name for a horse. Though it is horse themed. It is. Yeah. Uh, I saw someone commented that this reminds them of uh, what was it? Uh, Little like My Little Pony character or uh, something else. Oh, I don't know what that is. Yeah, that would be interesting. I'm I think it sure might have been. I think it might have been not safe for work. I think it might have been uh, say, like My Little Pony character or um, something like porn star or. Any <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Never mind. But apparently, this game exists. Yeah. So then, what's eleven? A uh, number eleven is Servotron. Servotron. That is not Servotron. That is Hal. <laughs> that that is. That is. I'm guessing that's an indie band, but I would love someone to actually name a racehorse that. That that is pretty. Uh, that's pretty brave to name a racehorse Servotron. Yeah, that that's would, uh, very daunting to have Servotron coming up behind you. Yes. <laughs> overtaking you. <laughs> All right, and then uh, what, what's twelve? What do we got here? Number twelve is. They shoot horses, don't they? I think I've heard the, them. I think they're an indie band. I hope they're an indie band because that is a daunting name to give to a horse. Like the horse doesn't understand that it's being threatened to win, but you don't name a horse that. Well, the, the, the horse can't hear the announcer, right? So It's true, I guess. It's true. Uh, okay, cool. So that was, uh, I guess that's four we've done. So uh, we'll move back to the bars and then we'll see you one more time, I think. All right. Cool. See you later. Uh, so uh, moving on. So this, this is about the halfway point. That's a little bit more than the halfway point. We would normally have had an intermission for this if it were a much longer birds. But with only five, we figure, you know, let's charge through. Let's uh, we, we don't need an intermission with only five. Um, 
So we were just going to move on. If it were an intermission, I would have had the opportunity to say, please visit kwlt.org slash donations and donate. It, it seems like I did. So we're just going to run the banner for a moment. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got that banner. So going ahead. And now welcome back from our little 10 second intermission. Uh, we have two more performers coming up. We have a non-musical act next, and then we have a final musical act from the West Coast to close us off. And then after that, we are going to go over our trivia, uh, and then we're going to wrap up the night. So uh, stay connected, stay in touch, and uh, here we go with our next act. Um, our, when our next presenter is not on stage or behind the stage or under the stage, she's an English professor at St. Jerome's University College uh, uh, in Waterloo, where lately uh, her teaching has been focusing on effective communication and use of the English language. Please, everyone, welcome to the stream, Diana Law. Hi, folks. Welcome to Poetry with Diana. That would be me. Tonight, we're going to be talking about anaphora and looking at how anaphora, you can see it, sorry, somewhere down the bottom. Uh, anaphora works in a poem by Anglo Irish poet Louis McNeese called Pair Before Birth. So, first of all, what is anaphora? Anaphora is a figure of speech in which a word or phrase is repeated at the start of consecutive sentences or clauses. Uh, you've seen it before. You probably didn't know what it was called. Think about Dickens. This, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. That idea, it was, you know, repeating throughout that, that section of Tale of Two Cities is what's called an anaphora. So anaphora can be used in prose, poetry, political writing, but what do you writers use it for? Well, it can be used to uh, create emphasis, to stress an emotion, to create a connection between two or three sort of disparate ideas. It can also be used to structure a list. So there's a variety of reasons why uh, an author might want to use anaphora. Now, we're going to look at, I'm going to read you Lewis McNeese's poem, Prayer Before Birth, and then talk a bit about what anaphora might be doing here. So, Prayer Before Birth. I am not yet born. Oh, hear me. Let not the blood-sucking bath or the rat or the stoat or the club-footed ghoul come near me. I am not yet born. Console me. I fear with the, the, that the human race will with, may with tall walls wall me, with strong drugs dope me, with wise lies lure me, on black racks rack me, in blood baths roll me. I am not yet born. Provide me with water to dandle me, grass to grow for me, trees to talk to me, sky to sing to me, birds and a white light in the back of my mind to guide me. I am not yet born. Forgive me for the sins that in me the world shall commit, my words when they speak me, my thoughts when they think me my treason engendered by traitors beyond me, my life when they murder by means of my hands, my death when they live me. I am not yet born. Rehearse me in the parts I must play and the cues I must take when old men lecture me, bureaucrats hector me, mountains frown at me, lovers laugh at me, the white waves call me to folly and the desert calls me to doom and the beggar refuses my gift and my children curse me. I am not yet born. Oh, hear me. Let not the man who is beast or who thinks he is God 
come near me. I am not yet born. Oh, fill me with strength against those who would freeze my humanity, would dragoon me into a lethal automaton, would make me a cog in a machine, a thing with one face, a thing. And against all those who would dissipate my entirety, would blow me like thistle down, hither and thither, or hither and thither, like water held in the hands would spill me. Let them not make me a stone, and let them not spill me. Otherwise, kill me. So, in this poem, we have sort of this marked anaphora of I am not yet born. And each stanza begins with that phrase or some variation of that phrase. And in some ways, it presents us as the audience with a sort of a, a logical conundrum. How are we hearing this poem? If the poetic speaker is not born, whether or not they have thoughts, how are they communicating those thoughts to us as the audience? So where are we envisioning the poetic speaker to be? And that raises sort of the next conundrum. Is the poetic speaker speaking to us? Is the poetic speaker speaking to God? If this unborn entity is speaking to God, then how are we listening in on the conversation? <clears throat> so there's a lot of sort of speculative space being created here. And it ties into how do we then understand this, this litany of fears and desires and wants. The unborn speaker seems to know a lot about life and a lot about the tragedy of life. Is the speaker speaking just for themselves or for all of humanity? Should none of us have to endure the trials and hazards. On the other side, there's the question of, are the terrors of the mature life that our speaker speaks about at the end really any more serious or real than those childlike fears of the blood-sucking bat and the club-footed ghoul? Are they all equally illusion? Think about how that anaphora works, that repetition, that calling again of the audience to recognize there is something odd going on here. And then decide how you understand the poem. Thank you very much, Diana. Um, I've got a question from myself, and then we actually have a question from the audience. My question is, uh, why poetry tonight and why anaphora? Anaphora, because it's it's one of those figures of speech that we see in writing, and I think we don't we don't see the craft of writing. Anaphora is just one example of a figure like that. There's a lot of craft that goes into shaping meaning, not just in poetry, but in you know everyday prose, and that's teaching communications to actuaries and statisticians trying to get them to understand that you can put craft into business writing to make it easier to understand. Okay, okay. We've, uh, so, we've actually got a question from the audience here. Uh, can we float that up? Sure. So Josh asks, uh, when is it anaphora and when is it just a repeated line? That's... Well, it, it's anaphora if it's just the beginning of the line. There's actually a different rhetorical figure for when the repetition is at the end of the line. Is at the end of the line? Yes. So it's it's never... I think we can't just look at it as just. When you see repetition like that, when it's that consistent, when it actually starts to draw attention to itself, I think there's... It, it's a clue from the author to look a little deeper. Okay. okay. To not just dismiss it. I mean, another famous example is uh, Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. 
Okay. Right? That repetition, let freedom ring, let freedom ring, let freedom ring, or free at last, free at last, free at last, great God and mighty free at last. Okay. So that yeah, patterning you. of language. Um, uh, finally, do you, do you have anything coming up this summer? Do you have anything you'd like to plug? Uh, nothing concrete. Teaching. Okay. Teaching. Well, thank you. Teaching. <laughs> Okay, well, th thank you so much for joining us. I would be waving. My feet is actually frozen. I seem to be, my microphone yeah. is fine, but my camera is not. Uh, so imagine I'm waving you. Uh, thank you very okay. much. And have a good day. Bye. Bye. And now we get to see this frozen full screen. Thankfully, this is not the end of the night. Uh, I am about to invite Mel. Let, let's, let's invite her up right now. Well, um, reminded nope. me. <laughs> You're on your own. Okay. Well, uh, um, yeah, Diana's Diana's performance really reminded me of being at university again. So we've got number thirteen, um, Velocity Girl. Um. may or may not be misleading there um number 14 is weather witch indie band or racehorse um in case you missed uh the category and finally because we only have three this last round so you can think a little bit um uh, we've got Number 15, Weekend Surprise. And yes, oh, hey, surprise. Surprise. <laughs> anyway, so let me interrupt you for Weekend Surprise. Mm, yeah, this is uh, for people who recognize the photo. It's a picture of the weekend. Weekend, yeah, got yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I want to say racehorse because I missed a few. This one's a racehorse. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you are tricking us by giving us a musician this time around. Hmm. Um, could be tricking myself. Uh, there are only three this set. Um, Surprise! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you can get those answers in. Cool. Um, All right. Yeah. So that's it. So get your answers in, and Mel, we'll see you at the end of the show for uh, for taking up the trivia. Right. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for this. All right, um, so that was our last trivia session. Make sure you have your answers uh, submitted. Um, and we're gonna move on to our final performer, uh, who is a musician from London, Ontario, who stopped through Kitchener-Waterloo on his journey out west and is now based out of Vancouver. Uh, he's previously been in a lot of KWLT productions, including Lion in the Streets and Legally Blonde. Please welcome our final performer for the night, Shane Stewart. Hey everybody, it is so awesome to be uh, associated with KL KWLT for the first time in so long. Uh, I'm not going to say much right now, but I've got three songs for you. Uh, see if you recognize them. This first one is from Silent Hill. Oh, <laughs> 
miss you too, Nadia. Hi, Emily. <laughs> Next one is from Castlevania. I hope you enjoy it. song and then I will get out of your hair. <laughs> it has been so delightful to play for you. It has been way too long and I miss the KWLT family.
thank you, Shane Stewart. Every no, he's over here. Shane Stewart. Every, <laughs> no. Thank you. No, stop. Thank you for joining. I'm everywhere. Us. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. That was great. Thank you for yeah. Thank you for having time. me. Uh, how how are you doing out on the West Coast? Great. Well, all things considering, great. Um, yes. I've been out here for about four years now. I think it is. Wow, it's been four years. Okay. Yeah, about that. It's surprising. Yeah. So, <laughs> did you uh, do you come here from work or what? Because it's you're three hours uh, behind us, right? Uh, I literally came from this side of my desk, which is where I work from home. Okay, fair, fair. Uh, yeah. So we've got a bunch of your social stuff up there. We've got uh, Twitter, we've got YouTube, we've got your Bandcamp up here. Uh, I know you've got a bunch of videos up on YouTube, Sun's up on Bandcamp. I also know that very recently uh, you joined in an 8-bit competition of some kind. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so uh, a bunch of fellow VGM artists on YouTube, um, we started noticing that we were all commenting on each other's videos and we were each other's fans. Um, so we decided to try and prop ourselves up on our audiences by doing a little competition to spread the wealth amongst us. Um, so early, earlier today at 2, while I was working on Twitch, they were doing um, the competition stream with everybody's video playing one song from Pokemon and seeing who the best one was, and everybody can vote for it. <laughs> to be the very best. That's awesome. Yeah, I, the competition is stiff. <laughs> and that is going to be running for a while, I think. Is it a song per month or something? Yeah, we're going to just be doing a song a month. Um, we're going to have the voting for about a week. Um, so voting is currently available. I posted it up on uh, my Facebook uh, just so people can. I, I encourage people to vote for me, but I also encourage them to actually give the other artists a chance because some of those uh, guys and gals wrote such wonderful renditions of that melody. So Nice, nice. That, that is cool. I am excited for you. That's really nice to see. Uh, audience members, head on down there. I know you're all itching to get some votes in that you won't be able to vote tonight. So, uh, <laughs> so head on over. Show, show Shane some love. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Do you, do you have anything else you want to share or talk about? Uh, no. Um, if anybody's interested in my music, obviously, as uh, mentioned, I have a YouTube page where there's 30 some odd covers so far. I started doing this uh, full time ish back in September, and I've just been keeping it up uh, one video a week. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us, Shane. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you. We'll see you later. Uh, okay, so at this point, we are going to uh, rejoin Mel, and we're going to go through what the correct trivia answers were. So uh, hopefully you've got those all in at this point. Um, Mel, want to join us? Not that I have a choice, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, no, I'm happy to be here. Um, so we're going to go over answers, as somebody said last time. It's like the weirdest class ever, um, and I'm your professor, uh, and we're talking about any bands or racehorses, and R is a racehorse. If you I look up R with four R's and look up racehorse, you can hear uh, an announcer get really into it nice. anytime, <laughs> anytime R is doing anything. Nice. Um. Huh. This is how we did. Okay. Okay. So, might have fooled some people with that one. Whoops. Um, <laughs> I expect it, on average it's going to be 50 50. Uh, number two, Daphne Loves Derby is an indie band. And, and here them? they are. Okay. That is them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Not yet. Have a do. Nadia's got the answers, or our answers. We we beat it out. We beat the spread. Ten mm. to nine. Okay. All right. Number three, Frightened Rabbit is an indie band. I, I mean, I I'd, I'd right. love if it were a racehorse name, because yeah. it's Frightened Rabbit. Out in front. Frightened Rabbit. Oh, no. People thought it was a racehorse. It is a well, good name for both. It, it right? is a really good name for a racehorse. Uh, number four, Gay Crusader is a racehorse, a very old, uh, well, I mean, no longer living, but uh, you can see from 1917, and uh, very famous at the time, because, I mean, in an back advertisement the, for cigarettes. Is that back when the Kentucky Derby was just called the New Derby? 
I suppose so. Uh, okay, cool. So how did we do with that one? We did not do well with that one. I challenge <laughs> that that is still a fantastic name for an indie band, Gay Crusader. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. All right, number uh, five. Ghost, Ghost Zapper. Um, here's Ghost Zapper, descended from Awesome Again and Baby Zip. There are some really good phrase horse names. Um, yeah. But yeah, Ghost Zapper. I like it. How did we do? Good racehorse. Oh, we nailed that one. Very nice. Two to cool. one. Very good. All right. Number six was... Number six. Half you, man. I think you gave people a hint because half man, half biscuit. That's that's an indie band. Here they are at a racehorse course. <laughs> at a racehorse course. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. At a racetrack. All right. And how did we do? We got... Oh, no. Everyone wanted it to be a <laughs> Everyone thought it was a bluff. I wanted it to be a centaur. So uh, I, I think Oh, I was... yeah, yeah. yeah right. And like, right, number seven. Thing. <laughs> number <laughs> seven, <laughs> Henry the Octopus is a racehorse. Oh my um, God, I was so wrong. <laughs> I thought that was too cute to be a racehorse. That is the cutest resource. How did everyone else do? Oh! <laughs> Oh I'm no! Sorry, everyone. I uh, Josh is leading you. Oh, no. oh boy. Okay. So maybe okay. Number eight. Well, we're only you know we're only. It's your nickel. <laughs> number eight. It's your nickels a resource. Yep, that was. I think. I think we're good. Yeah, no, if you're betting, if you're betting, you're like, okay, it's your nickel coming around. All right, all right. Yeah. Making I'm up for the last the one. Debacle. Debacle. Yeah. <laughs> Number nine, Jukebox the Ghost is an indie band, and here they are. Right with that, yep. Toad the Wet Sprocket, construction. All right, how did we do with that one, then? Let's see who listened to me. No, well, you got to listen to my English <laughs> person. All, only sometimes, though. I learned then... from Diana. <laughs> Wait, run into trouble. All right, um, so number 10. Number 10, New Young Pony yeah. Club. Yep, is an indie fair. band. I think we rocked this question. I'm pretty sure we rocked this one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. There's always, even with these big spreads, there's always one person who didn't get it. I wonder if it's the same one person for the last four, like 18 to ones. I mean, it, if it is, that person is like, the odds of that are really low. So, yeah. yeah. So, Richard is an indie band. Yes. A very niche indie band, judging what? by this. Um, Band art or band yeah. shoot? Are they still around or are they like Gay Crusader no longer with us? I don't think they are anymore because again, they're very niche. Um, I think they split up. I'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure when I looked it up. All right. How did we do? Yeah. We did not do well, but it was close. Well, it was, yeah. Close, close through. It's no for the octopus. All right. <laughs> 12? Number 12. They shoot horses, don't they? You it's surmised correctly. Uh, indie band. I do um, one person thinking this was a horse. Sorry, there's no, also a hint to do with racehorse names, um, which I did not give, um, but I can say now that there is a maximum length that a racehorse name can be, and this name is too long. It's too long. I thought you were going to say there couldn't be punctuation in a horse's name. Oh, there can be punctuation. Oh, fine. <laughs> now you have there can be punctuation in a horse's name. Yeah. And Nadia's like, yes, yes, there can be. Indie band. <laughs> All right. Three people thought they shoot horses, don't they? It can be a race. <laughs> you monster. A very political race yeah. horse name. Let's move on to number 13. Philosophy Vol Girls and Indie Man. I think it would be a great race horse name, but. I like it. I was no. frozen at this point. I was doing tech support. So let's pretend I got this one right. <laughs> How did everyone else do without my misinformation and misguidance? <laughs> oh. All one right. third, two thirds. Okay. Yep. Three, uh, 14? Mm -hmm. 14 Weather Witch? Racehorse? That is old, a great old, name. Old, yeah. I like um, it. Looks like an old horse. Do we know anything about it? I mean, not off the top of my head. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. But usually once you get to like black and white photos or illustrations, True. there's yeah. not that much information about them. They've gone the way of Servotron. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we got that one. And then uh, we've got 15, right? So this will be the mm -hmm. last one. Weekend, weekend Surprise! Is a race, race course. And you yeah. were giving us a trick question by showing the weekend. So 
Uh, hopefully we hopefully we beat your evil plan in this one. How did we do? Evil yes. plan. Yes. We did not fall for your trick questions, Mel. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thank you very much. Do we have uh, do we have a result of like if anyone got perfect or anything, or can we calculate that later? I don't know. Uh, in the meantime, you know, we, uh, I will move on with a few of our closing remarks. Mel, thank you so much for mm -hmm. running this. Uh, I've loved both of these uh, trivia things, so I'm I'm happy to see more the next time we do this. Yeah. Well, take care and uh, see you later. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna close it up now. Is uh, when I would normally plug the next KWLT event, uh, but the last KWLT event was March Madness, and the next one is up in the air. It could be something from you. Uh, KWLT is looking out uh, for ideas of what else can be done online. Check out our newest newsletter from last week, or follow the link that is going to appear in the YouTube chat, or might have already shown up in the YouTube chat because I went off script a while ago uh, for more information. Um, and with that, there really isn't much left from me. So uh, first off, I would like to thank our five acts tonight, uh, Ash, Sophie, Davenport, Diana, and Shane. Uh, thank you, Albert who had the joy of spending the evening with all of you, our lovely audience tonight. Uh, thank you, Mel, for trivia. And thank you, Nadia, for making the show run so smoothly. Uh, I'm going to invite you to say hello tonight this time. Hello. <laughs> hello. Thank you, Nadia. Everybody clap for Nadia. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, audience, for coming out tonight. I hope to see you all again soon. And I would just like to officially say that tonight at 9... 21 p.m. I declare tonight's bat Battle of the Bards, Bards 2, Bards at Home Order, probably at 922 now. Yes, 922 now. Closed. Good night. <laughs>